here with Dr. Scott Morrison, Head of Podiatry for Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital. And Scott, generally, what are some of the special shoeing requirements of high-performance athletes? Uh, they vary depending on the discipline. I mean, all whether it's a dressage horse or a jumper or a cross-country horse, they'll have different types of footing they travel on, whether it's grass or arena footing. So the, uh, the, footing, the, the shoeing requirements will change for each one, and basically the, the design for traction. Go through some different shoes. This is a shoe an inventor would wear. Like I said earlier, it's, it's creased all the way around. We call it a fullered shoe. Um, it's also a concave shoe. This, this really provides a lot of traction. You know, this, this crease would fill with dirt, and, and that really that dirt on dirt interference really provides a lot of traction. And this, so this crease is designed to you know, trap dirt and help the horse get you know, a better hold of the ground. So that would be a typical shoe they would use. Um, you know, if you look at the web width on this one I just showed you, it's fairly thin web width, which allows the horse to, to sink into the ground a little bit more and get a little bit more traction. As opposed to this shoe, this is a wider web shoe. This is a horse, this is a shoe a, like a dressage horse would wear. It has a wider web shoe, because dressage horses typically go on softer footing. And you really don't want them sinking into the footing too much, because that can strain their tendons and ligaments. Uh, so you, we typically use wider web shoes to let them float on top of the footing a little bit more. So that's a wider web shoe, something a dressage horse would wear. Uh, jumpers, you know, jumpers would wear, you know, something in between, um, depending on the horse's hoof. But usually they would go in a steel shoe. Uh, usually we'll we'll shoe them with a shoe that has a little bit of a rolled toe to it. That helps take a lot of stress off the heel. For some reason, jumpers are really predisposed to heel pain, and anything you can do to, you know, ease break over and take stress off the heel is usually helpful to them. Uh, but a jumper will usually go in a, a steel shoe that's drilled and tapped for caulks. So they can put different types of caulks in there, or cleats basically, uh, depending on what type of footing they're in. And the eventers would do that as well. You know, for, if the grass was wet, they may use a bigger, bigger caulk, or if it was good footing, they'd use a smaller caulk. But you can kind of change it depending on the, on the footing types. And there's all different size caulks. There, there's literally dozens of them. And here's just an example of all the different types of caulks available. I mean, there are fairly large ones and then there are just you know just small ones as well so all different types of traction uh, depending on the footing and, and the weather conditions that day uh, here's a bar shoe you know, some dressage horses and jumpers will wear a bar shoe uh, this just gives more support to the heel and the lower limb uh, horses with heel pain this would be a typical shoe uh, they would wear a bar shoe and a, and a roll toe would be pretty common uh, depending on their conformation as well. Horses with longer sloping pasterns uh, usually benefit from more heel support, so a bar shoe uh, would be something we'd use on, on those horses, sometimes preventatively as well. So it can be used preventatively or horses with, with some chronic uh, heel pain. You may see them wear a bar shoe. Here's another type of bar shoe. It's a heart bar shoe. It just has a piece of metal that goes over the frog of the horse's foot just to distribute some of the weight on more surface area of the foot. So you can use the frog to bear weight on some horses that have you know, real low hoof capsules, real low heels and crushed heels. Sometimes we'll use a, a shoe like this just to put weight on the bars and unload the hoof capsule on the heel regions. Uh, this can be made of, you know, you can make, any of these can be made out of aluminum or steel. This one happens to be aluminum. Uh, here's, a, here's an aluminum, just a regular aluminum shoe. Some uh, owners will prefer their jumpers to go in aluminum shoes up front in their front feet because it makes their, their front feet lighter. Maybe it helps them tuck up their feet over the bigger jumps. Uh, so sometimes you'll see aluminum shoes on jumpers as well. I mean, most everyone has access to the same materials okay. throughout the world. I mean, it's pretty, we all pretty much have the same access to different types of shoes. I mean, there'll be a little bit of variations in the companies and, and, and the style of the shoe, but for the most part, most of the shoes will look fairly similar. But as far as uh, injuries while they're competing, it could be anything from uh, stone bruise or quarter cracks. Uh, some horses will just basically twist their ankle or maybe get a tendon or ligament strain inside their hoof capsule. Mm -hmm. uh, those would probably be the more common things we'd see. Uh, we do worry about horses slipping. Um, you know, they can get collateral ligament injuries or deep digital flexor tendon lesion. I mean, some of these things are real common, especially when horses are worked, pushed to their limits, and they're fatigued and getting tired. If it's a real hot day, they're more likely to misstep and be a little, you know, and, and create an injury that way from a misstep.
The longer you let a horse's hoof grow, um, you know, the more lever you create and, and the more out of alignment things become and the more likely they are to get hurt and injured. I mean, if you look at horses with quarter cracks, as an example, I mean, most horses that get quarter cracks rarely get a quarter crack, you know, the week or two after they were shod. It's usually the week they're due to get shod that they get an injury or a quarter crack. You know, so keeping the horses on a nice, tidy shoeing schedule. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, keeping in mind that the, the horse's hoof is a shock absorbing organ. And so not only keeping it trimmed and balanced properly, but also, you know, the quality of the hoof wall is important. You know, so diet, of course, and the moisture content of the hoof wall, not letting feet get too dry or brittle, or not get, letting feet get too soft and, and pliable. Uh, you know, so using different types of products available on the market to maintain proper moisture content of the hoof and keeping the horses, you know, properly shod are the two main things you can do. And then, you know, the other, I mean, it's not so much a, a factor in these, case, in these horses because they're all really fit, but a problem common we see on the lower level horses is horses that just aren't fit. You know, the weekend war warriors, horses that are kind of just out of shape and then they're asked to do something on a weekend. It's very likely for those horses to get hurt.